so hello everyone again and welcome to my channel in here we'll be looking at enzymes and this enzyme is quite important because enzyme is really really important in reactions in chemistry most especially biological chemistry now what do we know about enzyme and how do you think enzyme is really useful in our daily lives first of all we need to know some really crucial definitions in enzyme and most especially <laughs> definitions which means what is enzyme so enzyme or just represent as E is known to be a protein that catalyzes a chemical reaction in cells and if you go to or check your cell biology you see various interesting enzymes that are involved in all these crucial chemical reactions and most importantly this protein makes it to be kind of a biological catalyst and this biological catalyst Kind of enhances the rate of the chemical reaction mostly by increasing the rate of chemical reaction otherwise there won't be life at all so let's say i'm drawing my enzyme which is this particular structure over here let me just try to make it 3d by creating some depth here and uh, let me see i create another depth over here and uh, let's say i just draw a little segment over here which is kind of a big hole over here why am I drawing a hole? because there are some specific regions where this catalyst can undergo various properties but I'm going to show you the most important and crucial property that catalysts usually exhibit one of these properties is the presence of this particular pocket here which is called the active site and what do I mean by active site? active site in the sense that these are locations on the enzyme like this over here or mostly on the surface where chemical reactions usually occur and now all these regions are really, really crucial because in this particular region substrates can actually approach this particular system over here but not necessarily bind so you need a particular change in configuration of this particular enzyme in order for a particular substrate to actually bind or get closer to it or recognize it now this leads to something quite crucial because this particular active site or I would say the overall enzyme is known to be unchanged during this particular process and once it's been unchanged then that makes this particular enzyme to be much more effective rather than in an enzyme that changes and then loses its configuration. Let's take for an example. One enzyme that is in focus is a catalyst. And what the catalysts do, they decompose H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, into water, which is H2O, and oxygen. Now, during this particular process, what this catalyst does is that it exhibits one particular configuration, binds this particular substrate over here to the active site and then the active site actually exhibits or transforms itself into a specific transition state of this particular reaction where the transition state is actually where the catalysis occurs and that leads to the splitting of hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen that is all about what catalyst does however looking at hemoglobin which is actually in the blood and uh, what this particular does is that it has an Fe2 plus oxidation state which is ion 2 plus oxida oxidation state and this particular state is known to be really active however once it exhibits this change in particular configuration it actually becomes inactive as it changes its oxidation state from Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. Now, this makes way to conclude that hemoglobin is not actually a good protein catalyst. However, catalase is a really, really good catalyst because it remains unchanged in this particular process. Now, in this particular case now, Let's talk about a particular site called a residue in this particular catalyst. Let's say for this example, this particular region, I call it 
a catalytic residue. Now, what is a catalytic residue? A catalytic residue is a particular segment of this active site where the chemistry occurs, and most importantly, this particular region contains various amino acids, and these amino acids are really, really crucial in this particular reaction. And this reaction probably catalysis is going to be important for we to be able to split hydrogen peroxide into this particular two compound. And this is really active at the transition state of this particular system. And that's where we actually get our final product. Now, what is a substrate? This is a substrate. It could be one, it could be two, and it depends though because if you have one, most likely you're splitting this one into two different compartments. However, if it's two, they're probably uh, making new bonds. And that's quite interesting how that is coming about. Like for example, three sin. Trypsin is really known to be a protein catalyst in a way because it's able to actually split or break proteins into various amino acids or polypeptides into amino acids by hydrolyzing the peptide bond in proteins. However, there are some other enzymes that can actually build it. So like for example, ribosomes, like you see in our body, they make proteins from a specific template in your DNA going to RNA and that's quite interesting how that translation is actually performed with the help of this particular enzyme called ribosome. So that's about it for the substrate and then for our product is what comes out after the interaction between this particular substrate and the catalytic residue in the active site. And that will be non shaded over there. So, that's about it for various key concepts and mechanisms involved a little bit in enzymes. We'll be focusing more on the properties of enzymes on my next video. All the same, guys, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button if you understand it, subscribe, and share with everyone around you. Have a good day. Peace, love you all, and be smart.